Welcome to the mountains, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I'm in my car, it's freezing out. I'm running up a 14,000 foot mountain, a 14er here in Colorado today. And I'm gonna take the Solomon Speed Cross Fives up the first mountain. And then, yes, I'm gonna do a double run today, a double run, and I'm gonna take the Solomon S-Lab Sense 6 SG for the second run. And then back at the studio, I will compare the two, talk to you about the differences, how you can each use each shoe in 2019. Let's rock and roll. Welcome to the studio. Welcome to the studio. Okay, a fan of the vlog asked me to compare these two shoes. And I went back and forth about it because basically it, these are two shoes that are really in different categories as far as the Solomon lineup. Uh, the Speedcross 5 is not a racer. The Solomon S-Lab Sense 6 SG is definitely a racer. Now, can you use the Speedcross 5 in a race? Absolutely. In fact, when I do the America's Uphill race in about a month, I'm actually going to use the Speedcross 5. Why? Because the lugs are ridiculous. This is a race that goes straight up a ski hill. So bigger the lugs, the better. Although it's tempting to put on this guy because of the weight is incredible. Much, much lighter than the Speedcross 5. So therefore, this video, and again, if you have other ideas of shoes for me to compare, please let me know down in the comments. All right, let's start first with, all right, let's start with a Sense 6 here. And another person asked today, I think on Instagram, what does the SG stand for? And yes, that is the keyword for this video, SG, down in the comments. SG simply stands for soft ground, soft ground, which means the lugs are just a little bit deeper on the Solomon S Lab Sense 6 SG. Uh, that's what the SG stands for. And by the way, this is being recorded February 1st, 2019, and the Sense 7 is available, is available. And guess what? They lo it lost a little weight. It lost a little weight, about a half an ounce from last year. This, this shoe, from this iteration of the 6 to the 7, lost about a half an ounce, and I don't own the 7 yet. Solomon, if you're watching, if you're watching, I'll take a seven. I'll take a seven. See, you know, you and so the Sense Six below. is a eight ounce shoe, so 225 grams, and it's got a 20 millimeter stack height in the heel and a 16 millimeter in the forefoot, which means it's a four millimeter drop. I like that drop a lot. It's not too high, definitely not too high, and not a one millimeter drop. Uh, and then the lug height, although these lugs are a little worn down from last year's summer excursions, is a six millimeter lug height. And for the Speedcross 5, much different shoe, 10 millimeter drop, so 30 millimeter stack height in the heel, really high, 20 millimeter in the forefoot, uh, 11 ounces, so about 320 grams, a lot heavier than the Sense 6. And so how do these shoes work together? Because guess what? They're just different shoes and they're they're designed for different purposes this and if you're okay so if you're if you live by mount like if you live in the appalachia area this is your shoe like if you're in or maybe you're in upstate new york or maybe you're in new hampshire or you know the mountains of georgia like i know colorado we have great mountains here great for running but there's mountains in a lot of places in this country the upper the uh, pacific northwest uh so anyway i don't want to feel i don't want to exclude everybody now if you live in florida actually you know what i've been to tallahassee tallahassee is hilly so maybe this shoe could work in tallahassee but i don't want to exclude too many people by always talking about these big mountain lug running shoes uh but they're, they're, they are designed for a specific purpose. And so this is your trainer. This is your trainer, the Speed Cross 5. This shoe gets you ready for this shoe. This is the racer. I am betting a lot of money. And listen, I'm open to other options, but I will be racing the Pikes Peak Ascent in August. I am betting big money that the S-Lab Sense 7 will be my racing shoe for that race in August. I'll be shocked if I find another shoe that would do better in those conditions over that distance. Now I will say for the S-Lab Sense 6 or 7, I would not race more than basically 
Um, basically a half marathon on the trails. I might take it up to like a 25 miler, depending on the conditions of the trail, but it's, it doesn't have a ton of cushion. You know what it feels like, everybody? Shout out to all the high schoolers out there. It kind of feels like a cross country spike. It's heavier than a cross country spike. You could, if you lived in a really, uh, a location in the world that has a lot of mud and you're doing cross country races in mud, this actually could be an option. It's a little heavy. It's not the, it wouldn't be the lightest shoe, but um, anyway, it could be an option for you if you're looking for a cross country spike that might have just a little more support because some of those cross country spikes are like, there's nothing to them. Um, so anyway, it does feel like a cross country spike. Today in those conditions, in the snow, you saw me bombing down the mountain in both shoes. This guy crushed it. This guy, not so much. So you got to think about that if it's a really muddy course like I'm hearing some pretty crazy stories from the Hurt 100, which is a 100 mile race in Hawaii, and it's notorious for being a very muddy course. I would I would lean toward the Speed Cross 5 for that shoe. Again, this is your trainer, this is your racer, all right? And yes, the question of the day for this video, the second video published in today, have you dialed in your racing shoe or shoes for 2019, meaning, do you know in your mind, like, okay, I'm gonna be racing 5Ks on the roads, this is gonna be my racing shoe for 2019, or if you're getting ready for track and you're in high school or college, do you know the spike that you're gonna be racing in for the spring 2019 track season? Or uh, maybe you're getting ready for the New York City Marathon in in, uh, in the fall. Anyway, I, I'm just curious to hear what uh, what you're thinking as far as race, racing shoes in 2019. That would be awesome for me. Yes, the Solomon S-Lab Sense 7 SG will be my shoe most likely for uh, the Pikes Peak Ascent. All right, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching another video about Solomon. I know we're doing a lot of Solomon right now, but um, listen, I appreciate the build quality the style of the the lug action for the mountains especially and listen i know ultra has good shoes hoka has good trail shoes frankly everybody brooks i'm really interested in the brooks uh caldera and uh the new balance i think the new balance has a shoe called is it called the king of the mountain am i am i dreaming here anyway i'm interested in other mountain running shoes for sure but Solomon's kind of doing it for me right now. It's kind of doing it for me right now. All right, and maybe it's because of the, t the terrain that I'm focusing on. I'm not sure, and I'm, po I'm pointing this way, just so you know, all the time, because that's the direction of the mountains from my shoe wheel. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Mm. Go get those mountains now, go get those mountains. See you tomorrow.